morning guys, so we're at Hood's Landing. The sun's just rising there behind us. See how foggy it is? You can barely see a thing out there. Yeah, high tide's at 10 o'clock. It's about 7.30 now and the water's pretty much at the dead low mark. You gotta watch down here, especially on the bigger tides. Low tide out on the coast will be different in the river because you got the river currents pushing against the sea currents. And so yeah, you don't want to get caught out with that. I have spent two hours stuck on a sandbar down here before. But yeah, heading out over the coast today, as long as the bar's good. We'll go out and have a look at the bar. If it's too rough, we'll stay in the river and try and catch some trevally. Well, we're out on the Waikato River. It's still pretty foggy. See the sun in the distance. Looks like the moon at the moment. There's that much fog. There's quite a bit of debris around, but you always get that on the bigger tides down here. Um, yeah, we'll head out to the bar and have a look and see whether we can get across. Uh, I'm inside the Waikato River. I'm about to cross the bar to go out onto the west coast and I have one POV. We Across the bar, there's some pretty, pretty big sets rolling in, but um, they're all pretty clean and um, pretty predictable. Follow another boat out there. See them out there. They're heading out to the 200 meter mark. Just talking to them at the boat ramp. They're going to look for some puka. So um, yeah, it should be a good day for them. But um, we will head out and look for some snapper and some kingfish. Well, we're almost at the fishing grounds. Um, sun's coming up, it's a nice clear day, not a cloud in the sky. That easterly is still pretty strong, it's probably about 10 knots at the moment. It's supposed to die off about 10am 10 10 or something, so it can't be too far away. Yeah, it's just a pain to travel in because the chop along the swell just makes it a rough ride. You know, you do 20 knots to get out here, just got to take your time. Hopefully you don't get too wet. Oh, it's barracuda. That's not good. All that sign there is barracuda. I may be losing a bit of gear today. It's just kawai and turns working all around us. I want to give this new rod a bit of a test on a kawai or something. And there's bound to be some around, but I don't want to keep losing gear to bloody barracuda. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Off you go mate. See if we can get another surface strike on the car wire. He's on it, he's on it, he's got it, he let it go. If you wind it fast enough, they only get the tail and they don't get the hook. It's hard case seeing them coming out of the water trying to eat it. He's on it. If I stop now, I'll hook up instantly. That's fair. There we go. <laughs> Another kawai. Good fun on the soft bait gear. Pretty sure there's nothing bigger here though. So we will move on. I can see something in the water over there. Something red. I 
I don't know what the hell that is. It's some sort of part to a mussel farm or something. There's actually a name and number on some of them. Someone Bartron. And there's a phone number on it, so I might give it a call later. And um, see if we can find out what the hell it is. I'd say it's just like a piece of a mussel farm or something that's broken free. There's just kawai absolutely everywhere out here. Please don't be a carway. Feels like a good snapper. Just trying to keep him up off the reef. So it is a snapper. That's what we want. Good fish. He's fat. Fat winter fish. So you got a good snapper around the 10 pound mark on that last drop. We'll have a go again. We're still drifting quite fast because of the wind. It's a real pain, but um. We'll just keep fishing. As long as we're catching fish, that's the main thing. I'm only using a 5 8 jig head at the moment, so um, yeah, I can go up to a 1 ounce if it's too hard to fish. Snapper, smaller than the last one. So, quite a nice fish. I was just dangling my soft bait in the water like that, and a bloody kawai came along and grabbed it. We're actually a bit too far south of the mark at the moment, but we'll give it a go. There we go. And another snapper. The bigger fish seem to be hanging out right up in the shallow part. But you can't complain with fish like that. Beautiful eating. So I'm just casting out and pretty much holding the line straight away. We're drifting up to where I've just cast, so I don't need to let any more line out. Uh-oh. That must have been a barracuda. So I thought I just got busted off, but I think I got bitten and then reefed instantly because there was nicks in the leader all the way up. I haven't re-rigged yet, but I'll just switch to the, um, switch to the better bug. This rod's got a bit more grunt to it. So Try lock up and pull them out. That is a fucking hook one. <laughs> Lost my better bug on the first drop, just got snagged, so we switched to the double trouble. That's the problem when you're drifting quite fast over a reef, especially a really shallow reef, is quite often your jig gets left on the ground, and as soon as it drags along the ground, it's got a chance of snagging, and that's how you lose it. Otherwise the fish drags you into the reef. That's sort of alright. <laughs> you lose gear, but um, at least you hook up when you're doing it. So we'll try this, I'll try and work it off the bottom, and we'll see how we get on. Big Jack Mac. I'm going to actually just keep him. Put them down for a big bait. Oh, kawai. There we go. Oh. 
Don't give them any. And that is how you know you've been reefed. It's been rubbing up against something sharp. Always pays to check the leader after that, make sure there's no more nicks. And if there is, cut them off. Because you don't want to risk losing another fish. So I've set the drift up once again, gone to a light, I think it's a half ounce tenure jig head, a slightly smaller paddle tail softback. Let's see how we go. See if we can get that big snapper. the shit out of me. I've been seeing Kawai follow my soft bait up so I've been winding it really fast to avoid them. And a fucking launches itself out of the water. Holy shit. And I'm getting fed up with those barracuda. Jesus that got my heart going. I'd rather have a Marco shark swimming around the ski than a bloody barracuda with razor teeth jumping out of the water. Oh, he feels good. Oh. Yeah, another nice snapper. You can see why I got a lock to drag and go balls to the wall. We're only in eight meters there. Oh man, that's in there. That wasn't coming out. We've got about five or six snapper in the bin, they're all probably at least 500, at least 450, 500, some bigger. You just can't complain when you keep pulling up a snapper like that. He's, he's one of the smaller ones, but yeah, it's just awesome fishing. So it's gone a bit quiet at that other spot. I'll give it a little bit of a break. And the tide's actually changed. It's going out now, so um, our drift is slightly different. So just trying to relearn where to position ourselves again. And hopefully we can get on to some more fish. You can see where we're drifting in this big circle. Stop up there and start the drift. We catch fish at about that mark there. And then by the time we get them in, we're over the reef. We've got to come around here, 
reset the drift again. I just like to give it a wide berth of about 50 meters, 75 meters, just so we don't spook the fish too much with our engine running. Just a smaller fish. Man, busted off on the bottom again. Right, so I've re rigged. I put a slightly longer leader on this time, maybe two and a half meters. Hopefully, that helps us get a bit more protection. And gone back to the five inch, uh, sorry, the seven inch bait on the five bar OJ head. So, we're back at our original spot now. There wasn't a hell of a lot going on at that other spot. But um, yeah, I'll come back here and try the big soft bait here. Felt like a good fish too. Why does this always happen to me? I think we'll give the soft bait a rest and might go back to the double trouble. Right. Oh, it's a trail hook snapper. Hooked him under the belly. <laughs> I think I actually felt that at the start. It felt like the hook pulled and then it was in again. So maybe that's what happened. Well, it's the middle of the day and this reef's gone pretty quiet. I've got a good boom full of snapper. So I might just go and um, see if I can actually find a kingfish to have a play with. I haven't caught one in a while, so it would be nice to get one. Well, we're out in deeper water now at the um, kingfish spot. And I haven't had a look over the reef yet to see if there's any sign, but I'll just get the rod ready and then we're ready to go if we find any sign worth dropping on. I haven't seen a lot of sign, just saw a little mark, but kind of hoping it's not a barracuda. Turned into a cracker of a day. Well, we've hooked something. I think it might be a kingy. Oh, yeah, definitely a kingy. Well, there he is. It's a kingfish. Probably legal, but he's a bit small for my liking. Just get a quick photo and then let him go. Well, I think we've fell hooked something here. It's coming up easy as. Turned out to be a worker day out here. 
the weather forecast was right. It said the wind was going to drop off in the afternoon, and that's exactly what it has done. Um, I might start heading home. I think I'll go back to the reef I started at and just try once more for a trophy fish. But um, we won't stay there long. We'll just have a quick jig and then we'll go, I think. And that'll be it for today. Just like that, that was a completely different spot to this morning. Just because the different time of day and the tides changed. So basically in the opposite side of where he was this morning. Another nice snapper. Right, it's quarter to three in the Arvo. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good day. Got our 10 snapper. So um, yeah, really happy with that. Nothing huge, but still all good sized fish. So yeah, that's good. Still a cracker of a day. There's a little bit of wind now, so it's not glass. Still not a cloud in the sky. Apart from over there. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll head back to the bar. It's low tide at four o'clock, so I want to be in before then. Yeah, it's been a good day. Kingfish were hard, but There'll be more of them around in summer. That bar crossing was pretty interesting, some big waves out there. It's alright coming in, I wouldn't want to be going out though. Just thought I'd stop in and see mum and her partner on the way home. They've just bought a house that they're putting up for rent and it's less than a minute away from the boat ramp. I reckon I should move into it. <laughs> yeah, just had a look at the house. Not a bad little house, older house, but it's had a few newer things done to it. Got a mean deck around the outside, be perfect having barbecues. But yeah, it's about less than a minute away from the boat ramp. Well, it's the next day down off, guys, and um, I haven't filleted the fish yet. I normally wait and leave that until I can go to my dad's house to do it, because um, the house I'm living in at the moment doesn't even have a single patch of grass anywhere or much of an outside area to fillet fish. So it's just easier if I go around to his place. He only lives three minutes up the road, so. Um, but yeah, for now anyway, I thought I'd show you a bit of a catch and cook. It's sort of my take on a um, Chinese style steamed snapper. So here we've got the fish from yesterday. They've been on ice all night, so they're still nice and cold. And um, yeah, you probably only want a smaller fish. It's only feeding me at the moment, so um, smaller fish, this one here will do. I think it's the smallest of the day actually. But yeah, we'll get him out. We'll um, gut and go him and scale him and um, go from there. First of all we want to uh, scale the fish and that can be done easily with just a simple butter knife or any sort of blunt knife really. Tip for you is to put the fish in a bucket of water when you're doing it because anyone that has scaled a fish before will know that when you scale a fish scales go everywhere and they can be a real pain to clean up this will also be handy for all you bait fishermen out there if you're um, on a boat or something and you've got say mullet for bait and you want to scale it just grab a bucket of water out of the ocean and um, scale it in the bucket of water it'll save your boat being a mess of scales at the end of the day right and once we've done that got all the scales off them we just want to gut and gill them. So if you haven't seen my video, you can check that out. Just 
just like that, he's nice and clean in there. Just give it a bit of a rinse. And another thing you might like to do is just get some scissors and trim all these fins off so that um, nobody spikes themselves when they're eating it. We have some rice, coriander, some spring onions, sesame oil, soy sauce, canola oil, salt, pepper, sugar, fresh ginger. We have our snapper. And there we have it, Chinese style steamed whole snapper and served with rice. Thanks for watching the video guys, be sure to drop a like and leave a comment. Feel free to click around here if you want to see some more videos and remember to click the subscribe button to keep up to date with any of my future videos.